Welcome back to The Viewpoint. My name is Mike Miguel. Now we are talking about matters, fire risk enhancement. Now, recently we have witnessed um, fire, school, uh, fire uh, cases in schools and uh, one unfortunate incident is that of Hillside Academy in Nyeri where pupils lost their lives. So how can we enhire, enhance fire safety standards, not only in schools, but also in other commercial places and generally where we live? To help me this conversation in studio, I'm joined by Lucas Ndolo, who is the SGA County, the Country Director. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Mike. How are you doing this morning? I'm very well, thank you. Yes. Karibu sana to GMK. And the first thing I would want you to talk about is matters to do with um, fire safety assessment. Talk about it and what is the checklist there? Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. And uh, again, thank you for having me here. Um, I think it's very important that this conversation we're having is very important in terms of, uh, of, of, of public awareness uh, for, for fire and fire safety. Um, I think it's incumbent on every single institution, uh, you know, where you have a workplace uh, of however many people you have, to make sure that every single year you, uh, you, you make sure you have fire audits, you have fire inspections, and you have all that. So it, it, is, it is important for the management of all these institutions to make sure that they go through a checklist which includes uh, the kind of equipment that you have, the training that is there for, for, for people, stuff that you may have uh, in, in the workplace, mm -hmm. that you, uh, you, you, you know what kind of response timings are there from or on the nearest uh, fire engine, for example. Where is it coming from? If you're in a place, you need to know, to know where is it coming from. You need also to have put into place uh, an effective firefighting team within your, uh, w your workplace. Mm -hmm. Because let's remember, when a fire starts, a fire may start and within a minute that fire has consumed the entire premises so by the time you have a fire response team coming to you it may be five ten minutes away so mm -hmm. it's a, it is incumbent upon upon the institution to make sure that they do have uh, firefighting equipment they have the firefighting protocols and and all these things we talked about a little earlier with you yes yeah. now, let's focus on schools but the aspect of um F having fire drills, especially, especially in boarding schools, is it something that is um, emphasized on and is it implemented fully? Um, I, 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 th I think it would be very difficult to talk mm -hmm. about, uh, uh, you know, about schools generally. Mm -hmm. I know there are some schools that do have fire drills yes. uh, and the law provides that one must have a fire drill at least once uh, a year. Yes. Uh, in schools, I think it is recommended that you have a fire drill twice mm -hmm. uh, every year. And there are some schools that actually have fire drills yes. every term. Yes. So as students come back mm -hmm. from their holidays, they do have the fire drills and they, they, you know, the assembly areas are clearly marked. Mm -hmm. The students know where they need to go to in the event of a fire. Mm -hmm. They have little teams that have been formed where they can help fight the fire. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, you do not wait for first responders to come. Yes. As an institution, whether it's a school or whatever, you do need to have teams in place that can actually uh, uh, help be the first responders to that fire mm -hmm. itself. Yes, yes. When we were, we were talking off air, and one of the things you you mentioned was um, something to do with um, fire inductions, that uh, when you are ushered into a place, the first thing that you're supposed to be uh, talked about is about fire safety uh, induction. Talk a little bit about that and why it's important. Yeah, um, you know, uh, as you come into uh, a premises, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, you know, if it's your first time there, it's a new environment. Mm -hmm. So it is important for you to know in the unlikely event of a fire, mm -hmm. where is it that, that you go? Where do you assemble? So uh, if I came, for example, of coming to KBC, I would expect that as I come in, I would have people, uh, a person come to me, yes. your safety and uh, uh, security and safety personnel mm -hmm. to tell me, look, uh, Lucas, uh, in the unlikely event of a fire, mm -hmm. this is where you should go to. We will uh, move to this location mm -hmm. at the car park. We will account for the people within, uh, within that building where we were. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is important that in every institution that that is done mm -hmm. for every person coming in. Mm 
And as we said, uh, we're talking off here, as you were saying a little earlier, it is important that um, new employees coming to a place, uh, you know, in, into employment are inducted on, 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 on the building uh, where they'll be working, on the workplace. Uh, you know, where are the fire exits? Are they clearly marked? Where are the fire extinguishers? How are the fire extinguishers supposed to be used? There are a lot of people, Mike, you'd be very surprised that, uh, uh, that just say simply because you have a fire extinguisher, a red fire extinguisher on the wall, that you've met fire standards fire safety standards you have not <laughs> and as we talked with, with you a little earlier yes. and I was very happy to see that all your fire extinguishers here as I walked in yes. they're all up to date until yes. January 2025 am I correct yes yes so uh, clearly that is one of the things that we need to be aware about mm -hmm. and the biggest thing as we discussed is about awareness and that's where we start mm -hmm. when we talk about fires mm -hmm. awareness is very important mm -hmm. speaking of awareness do you think um, we have enough awareness as to why fire safety standards ought to be um, a regular thing that people need to be aware about. Do we have that inadequacy? Um, Mike, um, it's, it's about culture, you know? Yeah. And, and, and if we do not build that culture, have that culture that a fire uh, is, is a hazard that we all need to be, uh, you know, aware of. Yes. That, uh, and, and we say where, where I work, that, you know, uh, uh, you know, one life lost is one life too many. Yes. And uh, uh, um, we, I think we, we were laughing a little earlier with you, yeah. saying that when we are all taught, uh, uh, you know, as children, that if you're bad, uh, you'll go to hell and you'll burn. Yes. Of, of, of course, you know, death by fire is probably very painful. Yes. And my heart goes out to the children who died, uh, you know, in, in Yeri, uh, you know, uh, from the fire. But the awareness, uh, I don't think we have enough awareness. I think uh, we need to have a culture shift. Mm -hmm. We need to be talking a lot more about, about fires, mm -hmm. about what the causes of, of fire are, and about how we need to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I come from a security company, a security background. Yes. And, uh, you know, people ask me, I was being asked yesterday, why are you going to talk about fire? And you're, you, you know, you, you, you have watchmen. Mm -hmm. no, firstly, I don't have watchmen, I have yeah. security officers. And our security officers have been trained on fire. Mm -hmm. They've been trained on the basics of being able to put out a fire. Mm -hmm. They've been taught about a class A fire, class B fire, class C fire. Mm -hmm. Now, you have institutions will say, oh, uh, let me firstly employ a security company where I'm going to pay 15, 20,000 shillings <coughs> and then the guard will be paid four, 5,000 shillings. Yes. That guard has not gone through uh, fire training. So if, if we change, if we have this shift where all of us, because as we said earlier, um, fire safety is about everybody. Uh, in schools, it's not just about the schools. It's about the parents themselves. The parents need to come out and call out the, the, the schools mm -hmm. on the fire policies, on the fire training, on, uh, on having smoke detectors in, in the dorms or in the classrooms as we talked with you earlier. So it's, it's a whole culture change that all of us need to be held accountable mm -hmm. for. I, I think from what you're saying, what I'm, what I'm getting is there's, we need to have a um, holistic approach. Um, if you are, let's say we are talking about schools, boarding schools, instead of only looking at the welfare of the student in terms of performance, we also need to look at the safety standards in, in, in cases where we have tragedies. Now, there's also the aspect of, um, this aspect of awareness. Now we have, let me use the word, a deficiency of it. A deficiency of it. So how do we enhance this and who is responsible in ensuring that this awareness reaches the people? Um, if we go back to the workplace, I think it, uh, yeah, this must come from the very top. It come, must come from the owners, from the MD of, of those companies mm -hmm. in terms of awareness. Yes. When we come to schools, for example, it needs to come right from the principal. It needs to come from the pe uh, parents, teacher, uh, teachers associations. Mm -hmm. It needs to come from the parents themselves. Mm -hmm. We must all hold ourselves accountable for that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, for example, in schools, um, uh, uh, we should be able, as I said earlier, as a parent, you should be able to go to a school and ask uh, the headmaster, you know, when is the last time that we had a fire drill? We must hold the school accountable for that. In uh, an office place, uh, a worker should hold, uh, should be held, uh, sorry, the management, senior management should be held accountable mm -hmm. for having fire drills, for yes. having fire training. 
you know so all this comes together it's holistic as you as you said mm -hmm. but the accountability must come from the very top mm -hmm. even when we're talking about fire response we we must hold you know the the the, the senior most levels mm -hmm. accountable for it mm -hmm. i remember reading uh, uh, uh when we had the fire in yeri uh, that when the response uh, got there, the first people who actually wanted to attend for, for, to, to the fire from outside were actually not firemen. They were policemen who arrived on site. But uh, when you ask yourself, in that county, do we have adequate uh, fire engines? Uh, are the people, as you had alluded to earlier, are they trained, effectively trained? Do we have the fire team from the counties going to the schools, going to the, 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 the offices, putting themsel themselves out there to conduct fire training, mm -hmm. hence increasing the awareness that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and you don't have to go to, to, you know, to the fire brigade for that. You can go to a security company like SGA and you can mm -hmm. say, come, we want you to do a fire audit or you want you, we want you to come and do fire training for our people and we will be very willing and able to do that. Mm -hmm. yes. So th th that is something that schools and let's say even businesses need to invest in in terms of uh, enhancing fire safety standards absolutely training uh, yes and and uh, you know going back to what we are discussing uh, one of the big culture problems is you know are people willing and able to pay for it you know it comes down to cost to cost yeah so you say oh but we life is very important every institution should have a budget yes. all right a budget line for fire safety and fire training mm -hmm. the law provides that you must have at least I, I, any building that you have, you must have a minimum of 10,000 liter tank of water. You must have a pump that's able to scale to the highest point of that building, you know, as, as, as a basic. But do people do that? Does that happen? Mm -hmm. No, it does not happen. Mm -hmm. The fire provides that you must have fire extinguishers. Yes. And those fire extinguishers must be tested annually. Mm -hmm. You must train people on how to use those fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you have fire extinguishers and the people haven't been trained, what's going to happen? There's a case uh, where, where, where we, we, we went to a place where um, a fire happened and uh, uh, employees took fire extinguishers and threw them at the fire. That's how <laughs> extreme it is. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to use it, but I think it might throw it there, it explodes and it will put out the fire. Wow. Yeah. Now, let's come back to, to schools. Are, there, um, are the same fire protocols for schools, uh, are they the same as for commercial places? Uh, or is there a difference? Um, uh, they should be different, uh, because remember, this is a place that we're talking about mm -hmm. having young children yes um, uh, for example if we're talking about fire drills mm -hmm. and we talk about fire inspections I think personally the fire drills should be as we said more regular mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, by law you're supposed to have fire drill once a year I think in schools as I said earlier you mm -hmm. should actually have fire drills every single term mm -hmm. you should have fire training for the fire marshals and the teams you put together every single term and not every year like in commercial buildings or in factories mm -hmm. so uh, I think the protocols and, and the awareness and the training in schools should be a lot more mm -hmm. especially now that we're seeing all this but uh, uh, you know what happens, uh, as we said with you earlier, that yes, we have these incidents of fires that have happened. Yeah. Uh, they'll not happen for another couple of months, and we forget all about this until another fire happens, when we will start talking about fires so again. The, the, it needs the, to be a culture what change. What we do is uh, we are reactive, we are reactive. instead of uh, being proactive. Absolutely. Uh, let's go back a little. You talked about classes of fire, class this, class A, fire, class B, fire. Talk a little bit about that. So um, uh, 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 there, there's, there are different fires. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get f a fire that's an electric fire. Yes. You can get a, a, a you know a, a fire that is uh, you know that has come from, uh, for example, from uh, from gas or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the different kinds of fires are, are, are what's it called are treated differently mm -hmm. and they're handled and they're put out differently. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know whether it was you we're having a conversation with uh, when we are talking about having a fire in the kitchen. So, yeah, so you, you ask and, 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 and people say, oh, you've asked questions of, um, which is the safest place uh, if you had a fire? Which is, which is the easiest place to put out a fire? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people would say, oh, it's a kitchen. Why? Because there's water in the kitchen. Now, remember, most kitchen fires are from oil, cooking yes. oil. What happens when you put water on that fire? Mm -hmm. You actually do not put it off. So the question we ask ourselves is, 
do you have in your kitchen, do you have a fire blanket? A fire blanket you would be able to extinguish the fire in the kitchen quite easily. Do you have a simple thing, a smoke detector? And these, th these days they are not expensive, mm -hmm. having a smoke detector in, 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 your, in your kitchen. So the different classes of fires, a fire that you come from el electricity, from a, a power surge, for example, that creates a spark and that spark uh, uh, lights up a fire. Uh, a fire that is in the kitchen that has come, oil has caught fire or, or, or that. Every single fire is supposed to be uh, put out differently. There's mm -hmm. fires that you put out with powder, mm -hmm. there's fire that you put out with foam, mm -hmm. and there are fires that you can put out with water. Yes. So that those are the different classes of fire. Yes. What do you think affects uh, response to fire tragedies, going by what we witness within the country? I think, um, uh, firstly, it's, it's, it's the awareness that we talked about mm -hmm. and the training. Yes. Because I, as we said, you don't expect there to be a fire engine right out there mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to help you put out the fire. Mm -hmm. and, and most of fires will move very quickly. So uh, the training, uh, having adequate training, uh, awareness and training of, of, of the members uh, of in, in that institution mm -hmm. is very important because it will be able to at least uh, control the fire mm -hmm. before you actually have the proper response coming in. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think also um, it's, um, and, and we said, we discussed this with you, yeah. um, uh, if you pay uh, our fire uh, responders well enough, you probably find people professions want to professions. Uh, people want to go into that profession. If we pay our policemen well enough, you expect people want to go there. If you pay your security officers well enough, people want to be security officers. So I think one of the biggest problems that we have is that uh, our fire fighting uh, uh, response has has been uh, has been overlooked. Uh, I don't. I don't. I believe that uh, we need to uh, to look uh, at our fire responders as the proper professionals that they are, and we need to pay them well enough mm -hmm. uh, to be able to to help people stick to those jobs mm -hmm. and do them professionally. It's also a way of um, attracting more personnel in terms of people wanting to go in that line of uh, line of work. Absolutely, because in some countries, you look at uh, in some countries like the United States, firefighting is a whole profession. They take it very seriously and they have dedicated people who deal with uh, fire. It's a whole profession. Absolutely. Now, w what are the challenges that um, you think schools and residential uh, spaces uh, face in terms of um, implementing these safety protocols? And how can they be addressed? I think uh, uh, we've talked about it mm -hmm. and uh, you, hit it, you hit the nail on the head when yeah. you said it's actually about cost. You know, a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, what you need to, to, to protect yourself against fire as expensive. You know, it's, it's a little bit like insurance. You do not want to pay for insurance, mm -hmm. but uh, you pay for it. Nothing may happen for three, four years. But when it happens, you are well taken care of when you go to hospital. It's the same thing with fire. So fire training, fire awareness, fire equipment. You invest in all these things in the unlikely event that there is a fire. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, the primary uh, thing, uh, first uh, challenge that is there is actually cost. And uh, I think every institution should have a budget line on, on fire, on, on, on fire safety, uh, where they talk about their fire equipment, where they talk about training, where they talk about audits, and where they talk about inspections. So uh, moving away from, from a fire just being a tragedy that you cannot avoid, mm -hmm. you know, you need, to, you need to put your house in order, whatever institution you have, and make sure that you are prepared. Yes. And that costs money. And yes. that's where usually the problem is. Exactly. There's also the issue of lags in terms of inspections for fire safety protocols. I think uh, that you would agree that is also a problem that uh, we face. Yes, I, I, I think yeah, I think that, that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but again, uh, it goes back to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Do we have the capacity within within our our country? Do we have enough fire inspectors? Do we have enough uh, people to go to go around? But again, it's incumbent on the institution itself to go out there and say, right, I am going to this private institution in case I cannot get a government institution to come and do fire audits for me. Mm -hmm. I am going to this fire institution to come and do fire training for me. For mm -hmm. me. I am also uh, going to make sure that if I have uh, a new building I've put up that, and I need uh, electrical works done, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go and pick up my my brother Njoroge Omondi to come and install yeah. new lights for me. Mm -hmm. I will go to a company that has NCA certification, 
uh, to come and do those installations. Okay. So when you come to me as a security company and you want me to install a fire alarm or you want me to install a fire suppression system, mm -hmm. you need to know that I am properly certified mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm properly certified to be able to do the electrical works that are there. Yes. Because if you do, do not do that, you will put yourself at risk. Yes. Uh, in the end, when a, when a fire comes, uh, uh, comes to be. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of accountability, because one way or another, someone has to be accountable. Um, what measures, in your own view, need to be there in ensuring that those who violate fire safety standards are dealt with according to the law? Um, uh, as I said earlier, I, I, it has to be at the very top. Mm -hmm. I, I, run, I run a company. I, yes. ru you know, I, run, uh, I run SGA Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think if, there's, if I do not have my fire drills, yes. if I do not have my fire, uh, fire inspections, if I do not have my fire extinguishers mm -hmm. uh, being uh, properly serviced and maintained, mm -hmm. I should be held accountable for that. Yes. And it is me who needs to be uh, taken to task on that. Yes. So I, I, I don't think we need to, to, to treat it as a, as a small issue. Mm -hmm. I, I think it needs to be treated as a ma major issue where the owners and, 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 the, uh, and uh, the senior management are held accountable, yes. personally accountable for that. Yes. yes. How, how do you think uh, technology is, is uh, reshaping uh, fire safety standards within buildings today? Um, technology is doing uh, is, is, is actually doing wonders. Um, uh, uh, you know, you to, today it is it is easy and 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 and, and very inexpensive to have a fire system uh, in your premises, whether it is in your residence, for example, uh, which will alert you uh, in in the event what we're sitting here on your telephone you can mm -hmm. get an alert some of the systems that SGA puts into place for example is mm -hmm. is domestic security mm -hmm. where we will install uh, uh, you know we will install small t detectors we will install uh, an intelligent panel that will be able to send this information to you that you have a problem in your house mm -hmm. we have CO CO2 detectors uh, in, in the kitchen yes. so technology has helped and 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 I think also uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know with with a newer movement with a younger generation being able to to, to send out uh, uh, you know uh, uh, clips of what is happening in places this is actually very good for training uh, we're able to train people and show them this was what has happened uh, you know in, in a place this is how we can stop a fire from happening this is how we I recently saw some uh, some clips that were there on on social media uh, on an exploding mecco for example how do you treat an exploding mecco mm -hmm. and uh, i was I, I was actually very happy to see that uh, if you have a bucket turn the bucket upside down and put it over the mecco the fire goes off mm -hmm. i i didn't know that myself yeah. but these are things that are out there with the advent of technology mm -hmm. we're able to spread the word a lot more mm -hmm. in terms of fighting fires yes. in terms of having the proper equipment yes. to to help you alert you that there is a fire and yes. then you can react to it yes there's something that uh, i've remembered we're talking about uh, fire safety standard for schools but also we cannot run away from the uh, fact that we have informal settlements what are the right fire safety protocols for those areas? Because sometimes you hear there is a fire in Kibra, there is a fire in uh, Mukuru Kwa Ruben, and so on and so forth. What are the uh, fire safety uh, protocols or standards within the informal settlements? Um, I think it would be, honestly, it would be very difficult to adopt and enforce standards in, in those informal settlements. But mm -hmm. I think what can be done mm -hmm. is we can create access routes in, into, into, into those informal settlements. Mm -hmm. The challenge that has always been there is that if you have a, if you have a fire at Mkurukwa Ruben or you have a fire in Kibra, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if the fire engine get, getting to where... Uh, the the fire is is, is a challenge mm -hmm. so i uh, i think we do have to go back to uh, what i like very much the mm -hmm. nyumba kumi yes. where the people come together they're able to create uh, access routes that can get into uh, in, 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 into those settlements mm -hmm. and be able to assist to put out the fire. Mm -hmm. We also need to bring the communities together where they, 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 they work together. And we've seen it when there's a fire that actually communities come together, they help try to put out the fire. Because by the time a fire engine gets there, the, you know, you can have 
hundreds of houses that have been raised. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we will need to have perhaps more support in, in, in these settlements. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd need to be able to provide, uh, you know, fire, uh, sorry, water, at these central water points that can be used to help put out the fires. Mm -hmm. I know this is perhaps a tall order because we actually don't, in a lot of these areas, adequate water supply. Yes. But I think it should the people within that community to yes. come together yes. uh, in every, uh, every area, maybe every Nyumbakumi, 10, 20 houses, yes. have a 10,000 litre tank as we're talking about to help put out the fires. Yes. But then you're asking us to do that when there's probably no water in yeah. the houses themselves. So it's, it's a bit of a challenge, yes. but I think the first thing should be to create proper access to be able to put out those fires in those yes. places. Thank you so much. That was our, that was our time. Well, thank you for yes. having me, and I yes. hope to come to KBC again. Yes, we, you are very much welcome. Thank we you. hope to host you again. Thank you. That is Lucas Ndolo, who is the SGA Security Country Director, speaking to us about matters enhancing fire safety standards within the country. This is where we cap this conversation, but don't go too far. The viewpoint continues shortly with Vivian Degua. Stay with us.